It's Master Chef. We're looking for a great amateur cook who can make it as a professional. Someone who can turn out exceptional food. This is definitely the chance to change my life. I'm going to get in that kitchen and grout some pots and pans. This is one tough competition. I really, really want this more than anything. Whoever wins, it'll change their life. Cooking doesn't get tougher than this. These amateur cooks all want to become a top chef. But only one will get through to the quarter-final. Six fresh faces coming into the Master Chef kitchen. Six cooks who actually want to know how good they really are. I want to see some real classics today. I want food that makes me excited. Welcome to Master Chef. What we want from you is a plate of food that will prove to us judges that you are actually a good cook. 50 minutes, let's cook. The contestants have to invent and cook a dish from any of today's ingredients, which include chicken thighs, lemons, cannellini beans, dried chilies, white wine, clams, basil, pine nuts, and linguine. Forty-three-year-old mum Cheryl wants to swap her job in IT for one where she can indulge her sweet tooth. My ultimate culinary dream is to have a fabulous patisserie, producing wonderful cakes and biscuits and pastries. What sort of style of cook do you think you are? I'm a pud girl, I have to say. I love cakes, pastries, puddings. We can't live on puddings alone. Well, my parents are from the Caribbean, so I've grown up with lots of big flavours, very sort of tasty food. <laughs> University researcher Mark has only been cooking for a year, but already dreams of running his own restaurant. I think I'm good at adding a new twist to old classic dishes. Some people stick to one type of cuisine. I like to cook a bit of everything. What sort of style of food do you really love? I haven't been cooking for that long. That's why I'm here to discover my own style. Tell me the dish that's going to get you through the next round. Lemon risotto with pine nuts. That's it? That's it for now. You have had 15 minutes already. 25-year-old Sam can't wait to swap a career in sales for a new life as a chef. I'd love to get up for work every day knowing I'm going to enjoy what I'm going to do. To be able to go into a kitchen to just make me happier than anything else I can imagine. What, what do you love to cook, Sam? I grew up in America and my family are from all different parts of Europe, Spain and Italy. So I'd say I've probably taken kind of culinary experience from everywhere I can get it. Yorkshireman Kim likes to take a traditional approach in the kitchen. The type of cook I am is I like British food. Everybody's into foams and dots and dollops and it's not me. Where did you learn to cook? When I got married, my wife couldn't cook. So I sent her off to live with Granny for three months. She came back and she still couldn't cook. So it fell to me and I've been doing it for 29 years. Ladies and gentlemen, you're halfway there. 25 minutes has gone. What would you like to do in your life should you go further in this competition, Claire? I've dreamed for 12 years of opening my own restaurant. Do you have the experience right now to be able to do that? No, not right now. Um, I've got a bit of experience of running a business, but not with cooking, and that's kind of why I'm, I'm here to take this journey. Working mum Claire thinks that now is the time to change her life. Yeah, I work full time. I've got two very lively children, so I don't have a lot of time to do anything for me. But this is my chance to, to prove to myself that I can do this.
A love of travel has fueled Shropshire lad Tim's passion for cooking. I travel a lot around the Med. I love Spanish food. Tapas uh, style of food really suits entertaining a lot of people, which, which I love to do. What do you love cooking, Tim? I love cooking sort of vibrant flavoured Mediterranean style food with a lot of spices in. Share with us what you do for a day job. I'm, uh, I work in my family butcher shop. You're a butcher. I know what you're going to say. And you I butchered. Left some meat on there. Left some meat yeah. on there. I was going to use it for stock. You have two minutes left. Time's up. British food enthusiast Kim is straying from his roots and serving chicken and spinach linguine. Chicken's very nice and soft and very well flavoured. I think it's a very, very well made bowl of pasta. Thank you. It needs something just to break the, the, the cream up a little bit. It's becoming a bit sticky in your mouth. Working mum Claire has produced linguine with clams and spinach in a creamy white wine sauce. I enjoy the sea flavour of your shellfish. I enjoy the tang of the white wine. I think it's got good flavour. I think it's got very good texture. I'm very pleased for you, Claire. Novice cook Mark hopes to impress with the flavour combinations in his lemon, pine nut and basil risotto. We have four things in a bowl. Rice, pine nuts, basil and lemon, and the rice is not cooked. I don't have an issue with the flavours and textures. It's, very, it's just hard to judge you on, on what you've done. Pudding lover Cheryl hopes to show her versatility with pesto stuffed chicken served with cannellini bean mash and spinach. Bursting with flavour from the basil and the pine nuts and the garlic, you cook. Thank you. We have the zing of the pesto. We have lovely, moist, well-cooked chicken. I think you've done brilliantly, brilliantly well. Thank you. Mediterranean cook Tim wants to show off a range of skills by serving spicy chili bean chicken with potato wedges and lemon mayonnaise. Crying out loud, I've just come out in a sweat. I mean, <laughs> that is just so hot. My palate is so stripped by all that chilli, I'm finding it very, very hard to define any flavours I've got in there. 25-year-old Sam hopes her creamy chilli linguine with side salad is enough to get her through to the next round. I like the flavours of your sauce. I don't like the colour of the sauce. OK. Um, I think there are issues here. It's a tasty bowl of linguine. Thank you. I think your flavours are right, but you're amongst a room of quite good cooks. Good cooking. Strong round. We've got judging to do. Off you go. We'll call you back in soon. Thank you. I am very, very optimistic about the level of cooking in this room. I think today is a difficult decision because we may actually lose a couple of good cooks. I would like to put forward Cheryl. We had very good pesto stuffed inside the chicken thigh. I'm absolutely convinced Cheryl is a very good cook. Her food looked good. It had good intention. I liked her food a lot. Mark's food today was just not good. His rice wasn't edible. It wasn't cooked. It was never going to work as a risotto. So we agreed. Mark goes home. Tim's dish was just all over the place. There was so much chilli in those beans. All I got 
from it in the end was just burning heat inside my, my mouth and that's not pleasant to anybody. Tim goes. That's Tim out and Mark out. Cheryl in. I agree. I was actually quite impressed by Claire. Her sauce was nice. It was creamy, the onion was soft, there was well-made sauce and the pasta was actually cooked very nicely. The food to me was very, very tasty. I'd like to see her cook again. We've now got a Kim Sam debate for the last place. I don't believe there is much between them. I think uh, Kim is a decent cook and I think he made a decent bowl of pasta. It's whether he has the base skill and the palate right now to go any further in this competition. I would like to think I've done enough to get through to the next round because then I feel that I can really show them what I can do. Sam's bowl of pasta tasted OK with a, a pink lurid creamy spiced sauce. I think the girl has got potential. It's the look of Sam's food. It's just wrong. I'm a fast learner, so I hope that they've kind of seen that in me and that they give me the chance to go further and realise that I am dedicated and I'm just something I really love to do and want to do more of. Who will go further in this competition? In my mind, this is obvious. Three of you are staying and three of you are going home. Claire, congratulations, you're staying. Cheryl, you're staying with us. Mark, Tim, sorry gentlemen, you're leaving us. Okay, is it Kim or is it Sam? Congratulations, Kim, you're staying. Sam, really sorry. You're leaving us. Hey. <laughs> I'm feeling really, really fantastic. It's the best result I could have hoped for. It was great, and there were some great cooks in there, but I'm glad that I'm through. Ecstatic that uh, John and Greg valued what I put in front of them enough to put me through to the next round and, and keep me in the competition. That was fantastic and we have our three. Tomorrow we're going to send them to a professional kitchen. How are they going to cope with that pressure? We will see tomorrow what they're made of and quite frankly I can't wait. It's day two, and the contestants arrive at a branch of Wagamama, the popular noodle bar chain in London's bustling Camden town. Hi, I'm Steve Mangleshot, executive chef for Wagamama. Today they'll be working under head chef Steve Mangleshot, and with 150 diners expected, it's going to be busy. They should be able to get the food right quite quickly. It's all about getting the food out within two minutes, getting the ticket in, the food's got to be on the table. It's 12 o'clock and the lunchtime service begins. Right, guys, let's go, go, go. Let's get ready for lunch. Come on. Claire, ready for you? One ginger chicken. Claire go, is go, working go. the tepan or griddle section, making six different dry noodle dishes. Straight in. Quick, 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 quick burns. Definitely hot and steamy under here. Cheryl is in charge of the popular ramen noodle soups, including chicken, seafood and chilli beef. Already she's struggling with the hectic pace of service. Just one stroke, one stroke, right one through. One stroke, right through? Yep. You have to just get it moving because people are hungry and they want the food now. Cheryl, let's crack on, a few orders on now. Let's go, go, go. Across the kitchen, Kim's in charge of three woks and eight different rice and noodle dishes. It's a busy service. Bring it on. An hour in and the restaurant's full. In the kitchen, stress levels are on the rise. Come on, guys, we've got to quicken up now, please, yes? Claire needs to get her combinations of noodles, chicken, prawns and tofu absolutely right. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Have I done it wrong? Yep. 
Get on one out. She's used the wrong noodles and has to start again. Sorry, guys. King's also rushed off his feet. But he holds his nerve and his dishes are up to scratch. Fantastic. Beautiful. Get a ticket on and get it out. Brilliant. Right, here we go. One Wagamama Rama for you, Cheryl. Let's go, go, go. As the orders flood in, Cheryl's still overwhelmed by the pace. All of a sudden, it's there's panic, so, you know, just trying to get everything ready in time. And the chef has to step in. Ah, oh, it's a Paro Loman. Two hours into service and the pace is still relentless. Let's go, go, go. Come on, last orders. Claire's put her earlier mistakes behind her and is producing perfect plates of food. Right, Claire, how are we doing? We're doing all right, thanks. And Kim continues to impress with faultless rice and noodle dishes. Come on, last two, let's keep them moving. Good man, well done. Even Cheryl is getting to grips with the pace. Lovely, good, good job, Cheryl, yeah. Ticket, go. Excellent, well done. That's your last orders. Send them. Go and grab yourselves a glass of water, OK? With more than 150 covers completed, the contestants can finally relax. Claire was brilliant today. She did a fantastic job on her station. She picked up six dishes and cooked them all very well. Chef was brilliant today. Just wanted me to make sure everything was going out on time to, to his standards, really. Kim has put a lot of effort in. Of course, he was cooking eight dishes today, and he'd done a brilliant job on each one of them. My first experience in professional kitchen, absolutely fantastic. I've enjoyed and relished every single minute of it. Cheryl was a little bit slow today. She probably didn't pick it up as quick. Professionally-wise, fantastic. Presentation of the dish, superb. It was very exciting, quite stressful at times, but really good fun. Thoroughly enjoyed every minute of it. Out of all the contestants we had in here today, I would probably employ Kim. It's now back to MasterChef HQ to cook their own two-course menu. There are three very good cooks in front of me, and there is one quarter-final place. You have got 60 minutes, your two courses. Let's cook. Yorkshireman Kim excelled in the pro kitchen. Now he hopes his classic British menu can deliver him the quarter-final place. Kim, tell us what your dishes are today. Pan-fried lamb with some fresh seasonal vegetables, uh, raspberry and passion fruit cheesecake for afters. We know you love to cook British food. Are we finally seeing your style? Yes, and we are, yeah. What have you got, do you think, that other cooks may not have? You've got to have a love and a passion for it, and, and I think I've got that. What do you really want to get out of MasterChef, Kim? I'd like my own pub serving good, honest food at a reasonable price so that people come back and come back. Kim, really proud of his British food, and he's doing spring lamb and spring vegetables. I don't know what's going to hold that together or make it very, very special, but I can't wait to get my spoon into his raspberry cheesecake. Working mum Claire's linguine with clams impressed in the first round. Can her own two-course menu now secure her victory? Your food today, tell us what it is. OK, starter is um, crushed uh, Jersey rolls, served with cream cheese, prosciutto and dressed, garnished with watercress, um, followed by beef breadington, um, some using bread instead of pastry, served with balsamic baby beetroots and seared asparagus. Tell me why you're wrapping a fillet of beef in bread rather than using puff pastry. Well, I actually saw a similar um, recipe, so I thought I'd try and adapt it. And this looks like a big posh steak sandwich. Yes, I suppose it is. Yeah, nothing wrong with that. This Breddington, the idea of this very posh steak sandwich, I'm intrigued. Claire's main course better be brilliant because her starter is very simple. You're halfway. Sweet Tooth Cheryl sailed through the invention test but struggled in the pro kitchen. 
she now needs to deliver when it really counts. What two dishes are you cooking us? I'm doing pan-fried pollock with, on a bed of um, wilted spinach with a watercress and lime sauce and sauteed potatoes. And then for pudding, I'm doing a ginger, chocolate and creme fraiche mousse with honeycomb twill. Is the lime, the addition of that lime, because of your heritage? Yes, partly, because I feel that it just gives it a sort of a slightly different twist. What do you think is the most difficult part of your two courses today? Just getting the timing right, because, you know, making sure that everything's ready on time, particularly with the main course. And you're confident? Yes, confident. Wait to get into her chocolate and ginger mousse with the honeycomb twill. That sounds absolutely fantastic. Lots of skill going into it. You have five minutes left. Step away from the bench, please. Claire has made crushed potatoes with cream cheese and prosciutto, and for her main course, a beef breadington with beetroot and asparagus. It's simple, very simple, but it looks great and tastes great. Well seasoned, well flavoured, well presented, very good dish, but you just need a little twist. Thank you. Let's try your main course. I feel it a bit flavoursome. I like the texture of the bread fried over the top. I think that's delightful. The beetroot is so strong, so sweet. It's knocking everything out. Okay. It is like a posh mushroom and steak sandwich. I quite like that. The bits on the side, though, are trying to, I feel, take it to a level it's not there at yet. Home cook Kim is serving spring lamb with potatoes and a vegetable medley, followed by raspberry and passion fruit cheesecake. That lamb is cooked beautifully and it's full of flavour and I get traces of mint coming off of the rub around the outside, which is absolutely heavenly. I think there are a couple of too many ingredients. I think those, the asparagus is just too much and I don't think it needs a tomato. I really, 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 really like that dish. Thank you. Lamb out. Cheesecake in. <laughs> it goes wah up there with the raspberries. It goes wah down there with the sweet passion fruit. It's lovely. The flavours of your cheesecake deliver are absolutely right. Ginger biscuits underneath, the soft, sweet cream. It is really lovely. As with all my cooking, things are simple, but they're tasty. Pudding lover Cheryl has cooked pollock with a watercress and lime sauce and potatoes, followed by a chocolate, ginger and creme fraiche mousse with honeycomb twill. Your fish is cooked beautifully. Your potatoes can do with a little bit more salt and pepper on them. Mm -hmm. The watercress flavour has not come through as well as it could have. I really want to like it. It's not a great dish, Cheryl. No. Sorry to say. The fish is cooked very, very nicely. The potatoes are a little bit hard in the middle. Mm. I'm absolutely convinced that you are a much, much better cook than this. Let's move on to your dessert. Mm -hmm. The overall flavour is like the most delicious chocolate bar you've ever eaten in your life. It is beautiful. I am quite um, taken aback. It's quite sensational. It just flies away inside your mouth. I mean, you are a real talent. Thank you. And this is what you love to do, Cheryl. You don't ever lose that love, because that is just 
beautiful. Thank you. We now have to choose one of you three to be a quarter finalist. That's not an easy job. Off you go. That was some great cooking out there. There is skill, there is desire, there is passion. All three of them are pretty good cooks. Claire's food, potatoes, cream cheese, ham on top, it needed an extra edge. The beef wrapped in the, the, the bread with the mushrooms, beetroot inside asparagus, the beef itself I thought was really, really tasty. The food that Claire is cooking, although good, is not at the level of the other two. Claire, unfortunately, has found herself in a very, very strong round. I think I've done my utmost to get through today, absolutely. But again, I'm up against two very worthy competitors. So should we agree now that Claire goes home? This is between Kim and Cheryl. Cheryl's main course let her down big time. It didn't really deliver any punch at all. You follow that with a truly amazing dessert. Cheryl's dessert for me was mind-blowing. One of the most delicious things I've seen in a very, very long time. I'd like to think that because they were so blown away by the pudding, that that would give me the edge. Now, let me talk about Kim. Perfect lamb, bursting full of flavour, followed by an absolutely delightful passion fruit and raspberry cheesecake. This is food that you should see on restaurant menus everywhere. Kim's food is great, but will it get to exceptional? I hope that uh, they will see that I can learn from what I'm doing and go forward. We know that Cheryl can deliver something absolutely stunning and she's cooking at that level already. The potential is extraordinary. I, I think you're wrong. I think Kim cooks of a quality and of a level and gives consistency. You can't do one good dish, one bad one. You and I know talent when we see it. I know there's no consolation to two of you, but this has been an extremely tough decision for us. But we do only have one quarter-final place. Our quarter-finalist... ..is Cheryl. Congratulations. I can't believe it. I'm just absolutely blown away. It's just incredible. I just can't believe it. It's like, oh my gosh. I'm really pleased and proud of myself just to get this far. If anything, it's just made me more determined to carry on and uh, pursue my dream. It's a real experience. It's actually reinvigorated my passion for cooking. It's made me realise that's what I want to do. It's been brilliant. You know, the whole experience has been wonderful. And it's just incredible to now go through and, you know, just see what happens in the quarterfinals. It's really, really exciting. Cheryl will be back for the quarterfinal when she'll face three other exceptional cooks.